Welcome to our lecture online. There's actually a second way or second method by which we can perform a dot product between two vectors. The first method you've already seen, so let's go ahead and practice that one with a simple example right here. We can say that a dot b, the dot product or scalar product between the two vectors a and b, is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, we are given the magnitude of b, and of course I should put a little arrow on top of that because it's indeed a vector. The magnitude of b is 6, the magnitude of a is 3, so this becomes equal to 3 times 6 times the cosine of the angle, which in this case is 120 degrees. The cosine of 120 is minus 0.5, so this becomes 18 multiplied times a minus 1 half, and so this becomes a minus 9. So here we can see that 8 dot b is indeed equal to negative 9. So what is this second method that I mentioned? Well, the second method is as follows. We can also multiply via the dot product a times b by multiplying the x components of the two vectors together plus multiplying, and not just the components, but the magnitude of the components, and multiplying the magnitudes of the y components of the two vectors together. And of course, if this was a three-dimensional vector, then you'd also multiply the z components together. But in this case, again, we're only working in two dimensions to make things a little bit easier at first. So, if we're going to multiply the components together, for the b, that's, that's easy enough for the b vector because there's only an x component, there's no y component. But for the a vector, we're going to have to find the components. So we can say that b sub x is equal to 6 and b sub y is equal to 0. So that's easy enough. Well, what about the a vector? Well, in the case of the a vector, the x component is going to be pointing to the left. So the magnitude of that, a sub x, would be equal to the magnitude a times the cosine of... And if we take a look at this angle, this would be an angle of 60 degrees, because 60 plus 120 gives us 180, so the cosine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 3 times the cosine of 60, which is 1 half, which is 1.5. And remember, the magnitude of the vector must be positive. And then we can say that a sub y is equal to a times the sine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 3 times that would be 0.866, and let's see what that's equal to. So we have a 0.866 times 3 equals, oh, let me try it again, 0.866 times 3 is 2 point, well, let's just call it 2.6. Close enough. All right, so now we have all the components for A and for B, so let's go ahead and apply it here. A sub X. Now here we have to be careful. Even though the magnitude of a sub x is a positive, we have to realize that it's pointing in the negative direction. So we're actually going to have to put a negative 1.5. b sub x, that's going to be a positive 6 because it's pointing in the positive direction. Plus a sub y is going to be a positive 2.6 and b sub y is going to be 0. In this case, that would be minus 1.5 times 6, which is minus 9, plus 0 or minus 9. So you can see that using the second method, the second method is simply multiplying the x components together, the y components and the z components, we get the same value. One piece of caution here, notice that even though the magnitudes of a sub x and a sub y are positive, since a sub x is pointing in a negative direction, for this to work, we have to put in the negative sign to indicate the direction of that magnitude as well. So we have to be careful here. And once we do that, you can see that we do get indeed the very same value. That's how it's done.